everyone please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a short prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bless us, Lord, as we gather today for this freeholder meeting. Guide our minds and hearts so we may work together for the good of our community. Help us to be generous in our outlook, courageous in the face of difficulty, and wise in our decisions. Amen. Amen. In compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, this is to announce that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided. Also pursuant to the 2018 Bylaws, Rules, and Regulations of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Burlington, time shall be set aside on the agenda for the receipt of public comments. Public comments will be received with respect to agenda items prior to board consideration of resolutions to be adopted. An additional opportunity for public comment will occur later in the meeting. Public comments shall be limited to five minutes per speaker. Unused time may not be transferred to another speaker. Persons may speak once per public comment period. I direct the deputy clerk to enter into the minutes of this meeting this public announcement and the advance written notice of this meeting. Freeholder Hughes. Here. Freeholder Pullian. Here. Freeholder Singh. Here. Freeholder Tiber. Here. And Director Gibbs. Here. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd be looking for a motion for the approval of the minutes of the conference meeting of July 25th, 2018. So okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I was going to put that one together with approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of July 20th. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. And uh, next we have a proclamation for the Mount Laurel Area Women's Club. Um, I saw this article in the paper and just thought what you guys are doing um, is so fantastic. So can Kathleen Strykowski and some of the other uh, members of the group come up? Come on up. Uh, so this organization, um, come on up. Come oh, on up. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hi, how are you? Thank you for being here. Hi, nice to meet you. What's your name? Jackie Whitfield. Nice to meet you. Hi, so nice to meet you. Carol Angle. So nice to meet you. Mary and Dorothy. So nice to meet you. There's Mary Lois. Hi, how are you? Come on in. So. Come on in. So these ladies um, get together and work on getting donation. Uh, work together and through their generous donations, they have this year um, they've donated to three local charities. Uh, the Mount Laurel uh, Women's Club members nominate and vote for these local charities uh, and support them with monetary donations from their treasury. And uh, on June twelfth, members of the board for the Mount Laurel Women's Club visited three area charities, including Morristown Visiting Nurses and Hospice, Providence House in West Hampton and the Animal Welfare Association in Voorhees, with donation checks, all received these with great appreciation. Uh, so you helped out women in need, children in need, and animals in need. So that's so fantastic. <laughs> it's incredible. So what do you all do to raise these funds? Uh, all right. Um, well, we started the club two years ago, and our mission, besides being a social club for women, was also that we wanted to do charitable work in our community. So at the end of each year, our treasury from our dues and from fundraisers that we have, uh, we decide we don't keep anything because we're mm -hmm. nonprofit. We use all of that for charity. So I think we had $1,100 this year that we split up among the three charities. But in addition to that, every month we also do um, <coughs> drives for different other charities like Hand and Heart and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Newborns, newborns in need, in need yeah. and cozies yeah. for chemo, yeah. blankets for uh, chemotherapy. For, well, so every we would every be happy month. to yeah. share any of those that drive information yeah. on our you know county social media channels Thank because you. if we can help drive more that, people to donate, right. um, we great. you know our, the county is always happy to partner with so, you know community groups and social organizations because. You're the backbone of what makes Burlington County such a great special place to live and work. And I just want to thank all of you so much on behalf of the other freeholders for what you're doing and you. turning a social, you know, a social club into giving back to the community. And what better way to, to spend your time than hanging out with some great ladies and doing good things. So yeah. I just want to say great. thank you. Thank you. I've got a proclamation for you. Let's take a picture with it. It's got the pretty seal on there. So everybody gather around. Sorry. Can you squeeze in? <laughs> it's my husband. Let's <laughs> do one over here. Okay. 
2018-00334 of the Board of Chosen Freeholders of the County of Burlington, New Jersey, authorizing and approving the entering into execution and delivery of one or more improvement lease agreements and equipment lease agreements, each buying between the County and the Burlington County Bridge Commission, providing for the financing of the cost of design, acquisition, construction, and installation of certain capital infra infrastructure improvements and acquisition and installation of certain capital equipment in, by, and for the county is set forth in the 2018 capital budget of the county, appropriating not to exceed $76,309,365, therefore including an appropriation of $29,309,365 in state and federal grants and authorizing other necessary action and connection in connection with said financing. So uh, we're now opening the public hearing on this item. Anybody like to speak about this particular agenda item? Seeing none, we close public comment and we'll be seeking a motion to adopt on second reading. So moved. Same, second. Hughes, all in favor? Aye. Uh, oh, roll call. Roll. <laughs> they even said it. <laughs> Freeholder Hughes. Yes. Freeholder Pullian. Yes. Freeholder Singh. Yes. Freeholder Tiger. Yes. Director Gibbs. Yes. Uh, at this time, I'm going to make a motion to move items I-1 through I-7. Yes. Public comment on agenda items. This is the portion of public comment where you can come up and speak uh, specifically about items on the agenda. Seeing none, I will go on to move items I-1 through I-7 by 9 to the Second. Second by Hughes, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Extensions, motion carries. Lord Hughes. Thank you, Director. I'd like to make a motion to move items I-8 through I-12 by unanimous consent. Second. Hughes, uh, Cyber, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Extensions, motion carries. Creator Pullian. Thank you, Director. I'd like to move uh, resolution I-13 by unanimous uh, Vote, please. Second. Second by Freeholder Tiber. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Motion carries. Freeholder saying. Thank you, Director. I'd like to move items uh, I-14 through I-16 by unanimous consent. Second. Second by Freeholder Hughes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Motion carries. Freeholder Tiger. Thank you, Director. I'd like to move resolution I-17 through I-23 by unanimous consent. Second. Uh, Three order Hughes seconds. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Sentences, motion carries. Questions from the press? Okay, uh, this second portion of public comment um, is for anything you'd like to discuss. Is there a sign in sheet? Sorry. Okay. Roger Kumpel. Director Gibbs, all three holders. Roger Kumpel, Vincent Town, Pemberton Road, 136. I'm a farmer. I just first of all wanted to come tonight to apologize for one of my farmer friends that we had some things that were in confusion and he dearly thought that he was right but he had made a mistake because the Fair Committee and the Bryant County Board of Ag are two different agriculture parts of the county. And we, yeah, we communicate together, but we don't always sit down at the table together to discuss the particular items that we're working on. So, and you people were correct because you thought we had met, meaning with the other party, when actually uh, Ryan Peters had met with us at many a county board meeting and we did discuss the building that we're talking about. So, it was kind of a mistake 
and we apologize. The Arkansas our County Board apologizes for you know what service. was said Thank here you. at that meeting because it was in there, and the, and he would have taken it back today if he'd been here. Um, we would like to move forward with discussion at some point with the freeholder group, whoever you select, and even the Farm Fair Committee that was involved with this. We'd like to discuss and see if we could work something out and see if. Um, you know, we could get something built permanent at the fair to, to work with you folks that would work with fair decor. Mm -hmm. I think Jason and Mary and Pat are working on setting something up for us to sit down, or we will be soon. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's on our to do list. That would be great. We absolutely will. And uh, thank you for coming out. Totally unnecessary, I have, but I appreciate it. I have one little last comment. Sure. Uh, in regards to our extension agent, like I said, I just wanted to bring that to attention to discuss it briefly. Uh, we have one ag extension, a field crop agent now that's taking the load for the two, for the one that retired. And if, when we were to put another agent in place, it would probably be a much lesser salary than a senior agent that already left. So what happens now at the college, we will be talking, they will be talking, we will be talking to you, and it will probably be a 50% county share versus the 35% that we did have before. But Beans will probably take in an associate level person or somebody just a little less than what our senior agent was. The monies will probably be still fairly close, I would imagine. I know that staff is working on this and has their eye on it, but we'll, we'll continue to keep you updated. And we appreciate it very much. Yeah, you keep us in consideration because it is, our, it is one of our driving motors to our operations on the farm. Having an agent we can call about chemical use of this or that, looking at our crops and whatnot. So, we're kind of we're kind of scared right now. We don't want our only agent that we have left to retire from his job because he is totally overloaded and he just don't know which way to go. Okay, we'll, we'll we'll definitely work with you on that. But thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carol Melman. Hello. Hi. I'm welcome. And I'm going to say hi to all of you. You've seen me before. Same issue. The athletic uh, building. Please state your name. Oh, and sorry, Carol Melman, Springfield Township. Thank you. Um, the campus, the, the Pemberton campus of BCC or RCBC these days. Um, I've done a lot of research since I last appeared here. Um, all right, so we'll start. The taxpayers have paid for everything, Mount Laurel and Pemberton. The campus, the, the ground that the Pemberton campus is on, was donated. Freeholders donated a large chunk of it and the Burrells donated 67 acres. Nothing's named for them, but they donated 67 acres to the Pemberton campus. So there was no cost other than the buildings. <coughs> Everything was donated to the trustees of BCC at the time. The property line is, one of the property lines, is the Rancocas Creek, at the middle of the Rancocas Creek. I cannot find an easement for the canoe launch, which means if you sell that campus, you lose your canoe launch. My suggestion, very strongly, if you have any of you been to the Pemberton campus recently, it's appalling. Define recent. Within the last month, six months. Six months. Broken yes. doors, weeds. It's appalling. RCBC doesn't give a crap to be very blunt about it about the Pemberton campus. RCBC should redeed the property back to the freeholders, and then rent for one dollar what facilities they need to continue, which is right now athletics, and um, what's the other thing they need? Uh, storage, warehouse storage. They are storing things there right now. The campus ties directly into the park's stated desire of Burlington County for green space and waterways. 1.2 miles of water is the Pemberton, is the Rancocas Creek and is the boundary line. It's foolish to give that up. I think if you go to having a subcommittee uh, not a subcommittee, get a committee together for real uses of the campus. The RCBC's never been able to get back to me to talk about the, the, uh, the contractors that they had hired to try to figure out what should happen with the campus. They did magically call me the day after I appeared her last time when I suggested that you not give them any more money until they respond to the public. Then I got a phone call. At, but I'm the only one I know that's been contacted by the trustees, and I will be going to their next meeting which is in two weeks. Have the campus go come to the freeholders now so that you guys can take control of it, so that it's available as a resource to the taxpayers that have paid for everything. Don't try to sell the campus in the condition it's in. 
figure out what's good for the Burlington County taxpayers. The freeholders spent $6 million out of open space money to buy 47 acres in Mount Laurel to give to, um, to, give to RCBC. It's currently deeded right now to the Burlington County freeholders. Do not give RCBC that land unless they give you that campus because they don't even have money to build an athletic building. They're looking for a private-public partnership. They don't have anybody to do that. It is a waste of taxpayer money. And $6 million to buy a lot that nobody wanted to develop in over 20 years is astounding. And that's open space money. I'm not happy with that kind of use of money. And you're letting Pemberton campus go to pot. It's awful. It is a fantastic resource. There's nothing out in that end of the county. Do you know why Pemberton was chosen for the campus oh, back in 1968? Anybody? It was chosen because it was the middle of the county. Well, right now, all of our... the base. It, part, partly. But it was also, if you look at the geographic boundaries of, the, of Burlington County, it's essentially a center point. Right now, we're pouring resources into the rich part of the county, and we're abandoning the poor sections of the county. I don't think that's right either. So I'm going to ask you to please, please, please get that campus in the name of the Burlington County Freeholders so that you can reassess and work with Pemberton Township. I don't think that there's any reason to keep the entire campus as open space. I know that's probably heresy to some people. But I do feel that you can use a good portion of that campus if you do a subdivision that can allow for potential development that would bring rateables into Pemberton Township while keeping the parts that are important to the taxpayers and to the open space. So, what do you think? So, we, we're working with the college, you know, we're using our staff resources to work with the college and the municipality. Ultimately, it's the RCBC Board of Trustees decision, but we are working with all the stakeholders to try to get to the best resolution. Um, Don't give them the land until they give you the land in Pemberton. You have the ability to do that. As I said, we're working through the process. I appreciate your concerns, and it's definitely something we'll think about. And I absolutely will bring this up with the trustees at RCBC and the staff there because they, they need to get, if, if the public are making requests, they have to get back to you. Um, 43,000 people use that pool. It is, by the way, the only deep water pool available to the public in Burlington County. It is the only pool that the high schools can swim at. I looked into the other pools. They are not deep enough, they cannot be dived into. It is the only competitive pool in Burlington County. If you get rid of that campus, if you close that pool, you've canceled every high school swim team. Is that a good use? Is that what the taxpayers want? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Seeing none, I'll close the public comment. Move on to comments by three orders. Three orders saying. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations, Gina, um, right there, a newly grandma right here, and uh, <laughs> she probably does not like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> and um, thank you to the Mark Laura Women's uh, Club, and um, thank you attendees for coming in tonight. That's it. Uh, thank you, director. I'm going to give a shout out to somebody that doesn't doesn't want it, but he's going to get it anyhow, and that's our uh, uh, director of engineering, uh, Mr. Joseph Brinkley. Um, Edgewater Park uh, is people don't know. I have a little bit of a dual role. I'm the administrator of Edgewater Park, and um, we had a situation in our town where we have one roadway that was really bad shape, um, brickwork that was done at the um, Corners was deteriorating and falling apart, and I asked Mr. Brinkley if he'd be kind enough to have somebody just take a look at it, and it was basically because I was concerned that people walking in those areas could trip, fall, that kind of thing. He was very nice to get back to me, let me know. First, he admitted that he didn't realize it was that bad, which was which was really nice to hear, and um, said that he'd take a look and see what he could do. Um, back about a week and a half ago. Crew showed up to start working on the road, and I got to tell you, uh, it's it's fantastic. Uh, the work that was done, craftsmanship, uh, the uh, curb appeal, it just everybody in town just is is ecstatic that that uh, road was done. It 
For those who don't know Edgewater Park, we don't have a downtown, so to speak. We have a major throughway, which happens to be Cooper from 130 to the river line. And it's the only centerpiece we have in town. And I just want to uh, thank you, Joe, very much for getting that done there burning incense and lighting candles in the church is your name, so I uh, uh, really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good job, Joe. Thank you. Real timer. I don't have anything. Thank you for coming out tonight. Real reviews. I uh, just want to make everyone aware of a event that the uh, prosecutor is holding next week. Prosecutor Kapina has put together um, a great forum that is about um, overcoming addiction. Uh, there's going to be stories and speakers that really will um, focus on hope and, and long-term recovery, and it, it should be a really nice evening. So next Wednesday in uh, Browns Mills, you can uh, find more information online. Thank you. Uh, and I just uh, want to point out that um, we're moving forward to, uh, tonight with plans uh, for re, uh, looking at the Rancocas uh, Greenway uh, Trail. Um, we're going to be making some improvements on both the West Hampton and Mount Laurel side, and it's been a decades-long goal of our uh, open space master plan to connect the Rancocas Greenway, and it's going to be a really, really beautiful addition um, to our amazing over a thousand miles of preserved parkland. So this is just going to be one more piece and for everybody to have access to the beautiful Rancocas. It, it, not everybody gets to have that beautiful waterfront property, but with, with these amenities, we're going to be able to have every resident can go and enjoy it. So I'm really looking forward to that action tonight. And uh, everybody have a, a great rest of the summer. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.